All right, Phil, Philip, Flaminia, just wonderful to be here in Addis. Um, I think, you know, when we first met talking about organizing that meeting, I think it was back in New Orleans for the CSTMH yes. meeting. Um, yes, it was. One year ago. One year ago. One year ago. It was that side meeting that yep. you had with the Gates Foundation. And, and I think we just literally had this kind of brainstorming sessions about how we wanted to organize this meeting and what we were hoping to, to achieve. And I have to say, it exceed my expectations. Yes, um, and I'd love to hear what you guys are thinking. But, you know, this idea that we had to just kind of not make these sessions kind of focus on vector control and, you know, epidemiology and just try to intertwine all those uh, themes and uh, really worked out. I think, I mean, for me, it was really uh, stimulating to see kind of where the field was in those various areas. So, um, yes, it was a sort of an experiment yes. to mix these sessions and have this uh, larger cross-cutting themes of uh, uh, resistance, data, data and innovation. But mm -hmm. I think it worked really well because mm -hmm. uh, he put people in the same room, uh, people that come from disparate uh, areas, and it really worked. Yeah. yeah. So what, what actually, if you had to pick one talk or one topic that really kind of opened your mind, uh, you know, you're hmm. a vector control person, and maybe there's something that, um, a talk that you could share, stimulated kind of an idea or some thoughts in different space? Yeah, I think that for me, the most uh, striking um, sort of realization is uh, the fact that uh, with, with the crisis uh, in malaria cases, we see this increase in heterogeneity, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, uh, and so which uh, moves the need uh, for control, like from blanket mm -hmm. control measures to more focal and uh, reactive control mm -hmm. measures. And um, I really uh, was very impressed by all the talks around this, uh, mm -hmm. this area, especially the talks uh, discussing um, sort of complementary interventions yes. like uh, reactive mass drug administrations and reactive vector, vector control. Mm -hmm. And so the talk by Michelle Xiang, oh, yes. for me, that was uh, probably the, very symbolic in terms of representing the spirit of, of this, uh, of this uh, conference. conference. Yeah. Great. Yeah, I, about I, you, Philip? I really enjoyed the, the structure around <laughs> looking at drugs, looking at vector control, looking at public health tools, and then kind of intersecting that with uh, resistance, with mm -hmm. the use of data, with the innovation agenda. Mm -hmm. And where each session kind of touched on multiple different themes and helped people see, uh, people who maybe uh, focus on drug resistance, see that other fields are dealing with uh, resistance challenges also and understand how can we uh, innovate together. Mm -hmm. One talk that I really like that pulled a lot of the th these things together was Charles Wanji's talk. Yes. That was that was uh, at, towards the end of the first day, yeah. Yeah. and uh, one of the big challenges in the field has been how do we find genetic markers mm -hmm. of insecticide resistance, including the me metabolic resistance, mm -hmm. and going through just comprehensively. Uh, here's all the work that led up to it. Here was the challenge: uh, insecticide resistance that we're trying to uh, fight. Here's the data agenda. Uh, that we want to use to be able to track it and respond to it. And here's some innovation and new tools to actually be able to use uh, genetic sequencing techniques to, to find it. I thought that one brought a lot of the key pieces together and uh, also was a huge step forward in terms of what's possible. Mm -hmm. oh, absolutely. Now, I think picking up on that, I think for me, the talks that also did that and achieved this, the same thing was uh, Michael White's talk. Absolutely. Um, because I think and picking up on your point about the heterogeneity, that draining the lake uh, metaphor of how as we're achieving more and more uh, the goal of eliminations, we're finding these pockets where you really have to kind of fine tune um, the tools that you deploy to achieve your goal of furthering elimination. Uh, I think that was really nicely illustrated in his talk with the, the, uh, the Vivax uh, the, you know, elimination in, in, in Brazil. Um, so that, that's something, and, and back to, to the combination of tools, you know, bed nets, obviously vector control and drugs, and how, you know, various combination of this uh, would achieve different outcome. The Namibia talk, uh, the Michelle talk that you mentioned was really kind of a nice uh, illustration of this. Um, yeah, and I think if I, if I have to think about the three big things for me, which um, I take away is the importance of data, uh, and how critical the quality and the curation of the data that we, we uh, 
assemble and put together uh, to generate those models. Um, I think technology, and I think we've seen a lot of that, you know, with machine learning, uh, CRISPRs, uh, methods, I mean, some of the talks that Jacqueline uh, yeah. talked about on, you know, how we can refine our understanding of, uh, of the genome of the parasite by manipulating uh, using technology. And then the one other piece which really speaks to the location is the contribution of the African continent on that Absolutely. research. And, and I think to me that was so obvious yes. during, throughout this and how engaged the continent is now in bringing those technological solutions forward. And so that was really truly inspiring, those three things for me. Yes, and I think that this is something that is, this is happening now and didn't, hap didn't used to happen mm -hmm. a few years ago. We didn't see much uh, complementation um, with scientists from, from Africa or other malaria endemic countries. So, uh, yeah, that's something that is uh, uh, really moving forward at mm -hmm. a fast uh, pace. And definitely we need, we need, we need that. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's been one of the uh, definitely um, high point, highest point of this conference mm -hmm. for me. I think one of the things that is most exciting along those lines is we see the um, development of how, how are we posing the questions that mm -hmm. we all work on together as a malaria research mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. And I think the, uh, the, the development and maturation of African researchers and African research institutions mm -hmm. really helps uh, bring those ties together, not only accelerating what research gets done, mm -hmm. but tying the actual formulation of the questions back to priorities uh, that that are coming from uh, institutions that are that that are on the front lines of actually fighting malaria, mm -hmm. and so that's been very exciting. I think it's yeah. going to continue to uh, yield benefits all the way to the end of malaria. Yeah, I think that the the notion of ownership yes. of of the enterprise of getting uh, to malaria elimination uh, from the countries is yes. is really really uh, strongly illustrated in that conference. I, I really enjoy that. Another piece also that I picked up on is partnership. I mean, I think it's becoming such a common, like, coalitions of the willing that get formed, you know, yes. between countries, you know, with the last talk we saw this morning for these improved uh, uh, trials where, you know, you have Asian, uh, African, South American uh, uh, researchers coming together, uh, trying to uh, really move the needle so in, in terms South, of radicals. South absolutely. South-South South partnership is really yes. very strong. Yes. It's, it's, absolutely. Really nice to Pastor see that. And... Yeah. Another example, I mean, that I can think of and that I can share, which was really nicely illustrated with the talk of Elizabeth Winsler, yes. uh, with the Melda Consortium. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like it keeps on growing, and you have people coming with with really highly specialized skills, uh, and that then gets you know multiplied uh, by in impact uh, by bringing that technologies within that consortium uh, with other people that have other. Uh, tools and methods to to look at uh, at, at you know the parasites and really. yes I think for even for basic science uh, we used to work pretty much in silos in isolation but now it's not possible anymore mm -hmm. if you want to move forward you need to be engaged with others that work with others and uh, it's it's really moving so fast mm -hmm. it's challenging but also very very exciting yeah one one thing that uh, really is obvious is the the sequencing right I mean it's just like right now. Nobody is asking me questions about whether or not we're going to sequence. We sequence everything, <laughs> yes. right? And uh, we get the data going back to the, the, the point, archiving that data. And then, you know, I think one of the challenges that I can see now is how are we going to make all those huge data sets uh, talk to one another? I mean, I think, uh, you know, we've, we're, we're now collecting data on pretty much everything. Uh, the mosquitoes, the parasites, the host. Uh, the genetic variations there, and how do we going to bring all those databases together uh, to try to generate new hypotheses on how we can How do we make them accessible also to malaria national control programs yeah, and for yeah. decision making? Yeah. And that's something that I think we'll see more and more in the next uh, few years, yeah. investment in that area. Two of the talks that I really thought helped to uh, illustrate the use of data mm -hmm. along that whole pipeline through innovation all the way mm -hmm. into impact uh, with uh, national malaria control programs were uh, Melissa Penny's talk and Emily Pothin's yeah. talk. Oh, yeah. With uh, Melissa oh. showing how um, using data and machine learning can actually define, based on the impact we want to see uh, when a tool is eventually deployed at scale, mm -hmm. what characteristics it should have at an earlier stage of yeah. development yeah. Uh, and drawing that link together. Yeah. And then in the downstream side, uh, Emily Pothin's work 
on saying based on data, the epidemiological data that we can actually are getting at higher quality than ever before, mm -hmm. how can we stratify what a country's epidemiology looks like, work in partnership in an iterative discussion with the National Malaria Control Program and come up with a more tailored approach based on the, the subnational epidemiology. I, I thought both of those really showed how far these approaches have come and are and the impact they're already having. I agree, and uh, you know, I, I just talked to Melissa just just before coming here. Uh, we're just like very getting excited about okay, so how do we organize those conversations so we can benefit, like as drug developer and drug discoverer, from all that knowledge that you know can be uh, put forward by by these approaches on how we inform really the drug discovery process and and hone and really focus on the properties that really will change and make an impact uh, in the field in terms of the use cases. So that yes. was really that was How really to wonderful. engage innovators at a very early stage, yeah. so how to move innovation to, to the field in a way that is logical and, and mm. productive and will be successful at a very early stage, So, uh, which is very important for mm. decision making and for investment because funding is obviously limited, so we, there has to be like a decision process that starts mm. as, as soon as possible. And those uh, efforts, those modeling efforts are really, really impressive because they can help in this, in this process. So just trying to think about some of the challenges that we all see in our respective field uh, going forward. I, I, I can start uh, obviously with the, the issue of Vivax elimination and, and radical cure. I mean, we've, some, we've seen some great talks about uh, uh, the progress with stefanoquine, single dose, uh, but we still are facing some challenges in terms of tolerabilities. Um, and I think, you know, we've made tremendous progress in understanding the biology of the hypnozoic, but it's still going to be something that I feel uh, is going to need investment because the, the, the research in that space, I mean, we, we, we know that there's not that many people doing it, uh, and it's going to be critical if we want to really get quality drug uh, to try to understand. So that's one area where I think, you know, clearly uh, the conference has really shown how, how difficult it's going to be uh, to deliver new therapeutics in that space. What, what are your sense in, in your respective kind of areas of expertise uh, that... Yeah. For me, in the vector biology field, mm -hmm. is obviously resistance, uh, resistance, mm -hmm. resistance, resistance to mm -hmm. to uh, every intervention uh, that we might uh, that we have a, a present, mm -hmm. but also that we might have in the future. Uh, mosquitoes are very resilient uh, organisms. They've been on this planet for mm -hmm. uh, millions and millions of years, and um, and so uh, how to be smart uh, about resistance, uh, how to predict. And so, in, and and also uh, report resistance. And in this, we had the, uh, talks about the IR mapper, um, mm, yeah. and we've seen like how this is really uh, helping us understand the massive problem that resistance mm. um, is is uh, causing. And and also at the same time, all those markers that, that Charles um, mentioned, and so that can help us managing also uh, um, identifying resistance very soon uh, while it's emerging, and so that we can we can deal with that. And also for the new technologies, uh, like uh, gene drive technologies and, and other technologies that uh, have been discussed, uh, how um, to avoid or to delay the issue mm. of uh, mosquitoes um, becoming, uh, in a way, unaf unaffected. And so the, the, the strategy losing efficacy, that's for, for me is a major challenge in, in the vector biology mm. and vector control uh, yeah. field. Uh, but it's, it's nice to see that there are other emerging also strategies that could uh, somehow help mit mitigate uh, the issues of, of resistance and, uh, and hopefully the challenge is to keep uh, this, uh, also these strategies coming and yeah. investment in these strategies. Yeah. One, one thing that I did not fully appreciate until this conference is all the ethical challenges around, yeah. around gene drive yeah. and uh, that, you know, again, uh, we are going to have to depend on the countries um, to engage in the process of defining, uh, you know, the proper framework for us to deploy those type of intervention. And that's something that was really nicely illustrated in that first talk. I think that's really a place where there's uh, still a lot of work to absolutely. do and not necessarily all scientifics. It's, uh, it's societal, it's absolutely. ethical, it's, yeah, uh, it's legal and, and really humbling to see uh, how difficult that path is going to be. Yeah. One of the things that... Uh, <coughs> in terms of some of the challenges ahead, following up on your point around uh, resistance, is that um, everything that, as you said, everything that we come up with, um, we will see resistance either emerging mm -hmm. or eventually spreading yeah. uh, towards, and which means that we need to 
not only develop the next wave of tools, but build very strong innovation pipelines mm -hmm. that can uh, continue to produce new tools and innovations and iterations all the way through to the end of malaria. I think that was one of the things that uh, some of the discussions here really drove home as far as it's not just enough to develop the next thing. We need to develop in such a way that we really keep those uh, pipelines uh, open and, uh, and uh, being filled up. I think it, I, I, I totally agree. And I think one of the things that I started to appreciate more is that there is so much that we're learning as we're progressing in the malign elimination agenda is with all those special cases where we're going. Again, yeah. going back to Michael's uh, talk, yes. you know, each time we're making progress, there's something new that comes up in terms of a challenge, and we can anticipate all of them. So sure. that's where I think the diversity of innovations and tools that we need yes. to continue to produce Absolutely. in terms of innovation to be prepared. I Absolutely. mean, I think it's a preparedness issue. Philip, one of, one of the things we, we haven't really talked about is vaccine. Um, yeah. And I was uh, wondering, you know, where, based on this conference and the discussion that we had, you know, where do you see some of the challenges, where that field is, needs to go? Uh, in terms of vaccine, obviously, they're very important public health tools yes. uh, across you know, the spectrum of infectious disease. And I was just wondering what your thoughts were uh, yeah. looking at some of the uh, immunological yes. challenges that, that, that Malaya present. I think one of the things that came up from some of the talks this morning and the discussions mm -hmm. in the Q&A after the talks mm -hmm. was around all that we're learning around malaria immunology uh, thanks to the work being done up to this point. Mm -hmm. Understanding uh, that there is some uh, protective efficacy that can be achieved through the antibody response. Mm -hmm. There's also a component for the cell-mediated immunity. And we're, we're learning more all the time. And I think a lot of the work that was, uh, research that was discussed mm -hmm. here is gonna help develop a new generation of vaccines and monoclonal approaches that uh, could actually become quite effective. But it, it, it really does drive home how much we are learning as, as we go along. Well, I think, you know, um, I just want to thank you both because it, it's, it's been really wonderful to work with you both on, on yes. putting this absolutely. program together. Wonderful. Yes, uh, absolutely. I, I, just, I just feel like it's been a very uh, productive, collaborative effort. And, uh, you know, the feedback we've had was very positive. I think we've done a bit of an experiment trying something that was not done before by just really trying to bring all those disciplines together. And, and I hope it's going to stimulate other organizers going forward to, to continue that trend, to explore uh, programs uh, that, that, that stimulate, uh, you know, interdisciplinary conversation. So um, just if you have some closing thoughts as we're kind of wrapping it up. Well, I would also, I would also like to, to stress how wonderful the Kirsten Symposia mm -hmm. organizers were. Mm -hmm. They made our, our life so easy, and mm -hmm. it's been really a pleasure to work with them. Yeah, yeah. And our wonderful host, Ethiopia, has been. Yeah, very much so. Excellent. I, I think as, as great as these three days have been, I'm, and learned a lot in some very exciting science, one of the things I'm most excited about is having brought some of these different communities together and seeing some of the common challenges, uh, seeing the uh, collaborations that develop over the coming months from people who saw um, um, challenges of mutual interest that they can take on. I think we're going to see some uh, outcomes and outputs from this meeting for, for some time to come, and that, that makes me excited. Absolutely. And I'm just, you know, thrilled uh, to have been able to, to work with both of you, and I look forward to seeing, you know, what's going to happen next uh, in the field of malign illuminations. I think one thing that people uh, said, there was a collection of, no, somebody said, started this talk by saying, thank you, malaria warriors. And yes. uh, I yes. want, and, so, and, uh, and I think, uh, I thank you both, Malaya Warriors, uh, uh, for, <laughs> for joining you. me uh, in this campaign.